I spent the last seven years researching fire weather because it was clear to me that climate disruption, of which fire is just one manifestation, is the issue of our time. It's an atmospheric issue, it's an environmental issue, it's a political issue, it's an energy issue, it's an infrastructure issue, it's a climate justice issue. And Conrad Sauvé, the CEO of Red Cross Canada, told me something really that kind of brought this home more graphically than, uh, than any of these stats. He said he started with them, I think, about 15 years ago. And he said, when I started working for the Red Cross, about 80% of our work was outside Canada, and that's what you'd expect. Canada is the stable, safe place that sends blue hats and red crosses out to help other people, because other people live in war-torn, climate-torn disaster zones, and, and we go and help them. Now, according to Conrad Sauvé, 80% of the Red Cross Canada's work is inside Canada. So our country has changed in a lot of ways. So uh, we're not used to this, we're not ready for it, physically or mentally. And I want to emphasize that this is not a new normal, because a new normal implies some kind of new plateau. This is clima incognita. This is the unknown climate. We know the air is getting hotter because we can feel it. Fire is behaving differently now, and it's that gradually and then suddenly. Everybody I interviewed for this book, you know, Australia, California, uh, Alberta, everybody, the common theme was, I can't believe how fast it moved. And that's um, what you um, raise the heat and drop the humidity, and you basically create this bigger space, in a way, for fire to operate in. It sort of got more elbow room. You have to imagine, you know, we see fire over here. What the fire is seeing is this delicious cloud of flammable gas that it can go engage with instantly. And this is why houses in Fort McMurray burnt to the basement in five minutes. Firefighters told me this. One, couple, one thing they said to me was, we got our ass handed to us. And, and these are, you know, type A competitive people. And they're team-oriented, they're scrappy, they go in there and they kick ass. That's what they do. That's what firefighters do. And they're not used to, you know, normal house fire. You might lose the house, but you are going to beat the fire. Ultimately, you will beat the fire. That's not what happened here. And so what I kept hearing was the firefighting operation turned into a life-saving operation. So that's how different fire is now. That's the discontinuity for firefighters. They go in there equipped to fight a 1990s fire, and they're met with a 21st century fire. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't hopeful. It's, uh, I mean, I, I did, when you look, look, at, look what Homo sapiens have been through. Look at all the endings we've been through. Look at all the losses we've suffered. Everyone in this room is descended from somebody who got blown out of somewhere else in some really painful way. Something ended dramatically for them, often traumatically. That's why we're here. And we're the survivors of that. And we can do this. Uh, I, I really have no doubt. You know, I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a parent, and I absolutely have hope. And I really wouldn't be bothering to sit here. Uh, but I think how I deal with my fear and anxiety is to really go into the thing that's scaring me and really try to come to grips with it. But I'm also astounded by what people know, what people are able to do, what people are able to invent and conceive of. And just the idea of South Dakota, South Dakota, man, uh, getting you know, more than three quarters of its energy uh, electricity from renewables, you know, nobody thought about that in the 50s. You know, look how, I mean, it feels too slow right now. And, and it is too slow for a lot of species and certain types of stability that we really count on. But it is happening. Uh, and that is really exciting to me. You know, somehow I can hold both, and that is what humans do. You know, we can, we're able to hold fear and manage fear and somehow go on and be brave for our families. And so that's the short answer is yes, and in part because of people like you. So, and then people, other people who are in this room who are, who are forging ahead, and it, you know, it is rugged out there. So we need each other. 
I mean, that's our superpower. It isn't fossil fuels. It's our capacity for community and invention. And that's super exciting to me. I mean, the, 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 the renewable energy in this room is staggering. <laughs> really. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.